Welcome to this video about advanced Figma prototyping tips and tricks by MoonLearning.io. MoonLearning is an online learning platform for UX UI design in Figma. In this video, I'll show you some takeouts of little hidden gems from my deep dive prototyping course. I am working on a Mac. If you're on a PC, then just make sure to substitute the keys accordingly. Let's start with my favorite one that will surely blow your mind. Auto layout and interactive components are a match made in heaven. Here I have a component set with two variants of a different height. And all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna connect them and I'm gonna say on click, change to, and use smart animate here. Let's set this to 500 so you can see it better. And then we're gonna return the favor from the blue one to the smaller red one. Let's jump back to our design tab. And now I'm pulling out some instances. And what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna set up those instances as an auto layout group. So I'm connecting them and you can either press auto layout here or use the shortcut shift A. So let's hit play and see that in action. And you can see that because I'm using auto layout, it automatically fills up any freed space. This technique also allows us to simulate the effect of deleting elements. The simple trick hereby is that within my component set, I have a variant, which I called gone, with the height of zero. So my first variant, if I drag, it will animate to the second one, showing the delete button. And if I click on delete, then this will smart animate to my new variant with zero height and therefore look like it disappeared. And then my design is simply set up of instances grouped in an auto layout frame. Next little feature I love, stateful design with sections. So in my example here, I am entering a process of step A, B and C from various places from my app. So this could be something like a checkout or a sign up. So in my prototype, I am entering the process, A goes through B, and then at C, I am leaving. Now, if I enter the process again from another place, it will always jump back to A, which is quite annoying. Let's say I already added some information. Let's jump back to our file and simply draw a section. You find that in the frames menu or simply hit Shift S. Now, all I need to do, I need to reconnect, not to the first frame, but to the entire section. If I now have a look at my prototyping, you can see that if I enter the process A, B, C, leave at C, jump to any other place, enter again, it will remember the last frame I visited within the section. Little extra tip, always enter your section with navigate to, otherwise it won't work. But inside you can choose swap overlay. This way you can use the back action and you can jump back to any place that you entered your section automatically. Next one, nested prototypes for your presentation. This will surely impress at your next meeting. Just like everything in Figma, prototyping is all about nesting frames. It's very important to understand the concept that we add behavior to a single frame, no matter where it's placed. So once I set up all my fixed elements, my scrolling behavior and my prototype on this frame, I can simply drag it over into my presentation. I can then connect across different presentation slides, just as I would do with any other prototype. As we jump to presentation mode, we have now a live working prototype within our slides. Now let me show you a little more about the scroll to action. It's actually overlooked quite a lot, but there is so much you can do with it. So quite an obvious use for this would be a one page website where we'd want to connect our navigation with different sections on the page. So I'm using scroll to set just an easing animation. And if you're wondering, the offset is only there if you have, for example, a fixed menu bar so that it's taken out of the positioning. Make sure that you have clipped content and the scrolling behavior set to vertical. Let's hit play. And you can see that our navigation works just perfectly. But scroll to doesn't only work in one direction. You can also create nice little effects like this. 
For this to work, I have a parent frame and within that parent frame, I have a nested horizontal scroll frame. So you can see in my prototyping mode that this frame is set to horizontal scrolling and very important, I have clipped content. So I have content that is larger than this frame. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Then I have my buttons down here and notice how they're not set on this frame with the images, but on the parent frame. If we jump over to prototyping, you can see that I connected each of those buttons with one of the images. And I did that by setting them to on click scroll to. And we can even push this further and create scroll to in multiple directions, like for this map. So same story, really. I have a parent frame that holds the different locations here. And then on the same parent frame, I have another nested frame holding the map. And very important again, this is set to clip content and the content is much larger than the frame. And here you can see that I placed pins for my different locations on that frame, also on the hidden part of it. Now in prototyping, it's very important that this frame is set to horizontal and vertical scrolling, only my map, not the rest. Connections, same story as before, on click, scroll to, and if you're wondering about the offset here, this is exactly half of the size of the nested frame. And this means that if I click on any of those activating scroll to, then the scroll to will position the pin right in the center of this frame. You can also combine Smart Animate and Figma Moving Animations. So let's say you have this frame here with a push animation. That looks great, but you want the menu to be animated while pushing the rest of the frame. So this is a little hidden and only visible if you have a moving animation activated. Then you'll see this little box down here and you can tick Smart Animate Matching Layers. Matching layers means that they're set up with the same name and the same hierarchy. Also make sure that you set up everything that you don't want to smart animate with, for example, different names. Let's hit play and you can see that everything else keeps on pushing in nicely. Just our menu is now smart animated. Hover zoom with interactive components. So interactive components are my big love anyways. If you don't know about them, make sure that you check out my deep dive course on components. Today, I want to show you how you can create a really nice zoom hover effect. So here's my component set. I'm connecting the two variants with while hovering and smart animate. And I am selecting the image on the second variant and I hit K. This opens the scaling menu and I'm simply setting this to 1.1. Let's have a look at our presentation mode and you can see that all my instances inherit the behavior. With a similar setup, we can start playing a video on Hover. Just be aware that video only works on paid plans. So here I have a component with a video embedded. Now I'm gonna create an instance. I'm gonna detach this instance, rename it to thumbnail and still, and I'm gonna turn it back into a component. With a shortcut Shift, Command and C, I'm copying a PNG to my clipboard and I'm pasting it where I had the video. So I'm replacing the video with an image. Combine for a component set. And now I am simply connecting. So I'm connecting and setting this to while hovering, Smart Animate. Just pull out an instance on an empty frame, hit play and you can see your hover video in action. Let's add some more magic to our interactive components and create a hover and enlarge. This is so simple, it's almost scary. So all I'm doing is that within my component set, I am connecting them while hovering, change to and smart animate. In my design, I simply have instances. And as you can see, those instances are grouped in an auto layout frame with a horizontal setting. And it's aligned bottom center. 
The only thing you need to consider here really is that inside here I have this cross. Now I also need the cross on my final destination even though on hover it's disappearing. So all I did is I set this to pass through zero. Get rid of all connections on a page. I can't believe I didn't know about this for so long. Make sure you're in the prototyping tab, then simply click on the canvas and right click and you'll get the little canvas menu. Select remove all interactions and that's it. So generally you cannot smart animate between shapes in Figma. So you can't go for example from a rectangle to a star. However, there is a little trick you can use if you want to animate a rectangle into a circle. Simply use the same rectangle and then on the destination round the corners. Little downer, it only works if you're rounding all four corners. Use flows to guide. As soon as you're setting up your first connector, Figma will automatically add a flow. You can click on the flow to rename it. And if you select the frame, you will see a little icon next to the flow where you can also add descriptions, which is really handy when it comes to testing. You can also add more flows anywhere in your design. If you click on the canvas while still in prototyping mode, you get an overview of your flows. And this is the interesting part because here you can not only jump to the selected flow, but also copy a direct link to the flow. So here's an example of a project that I set up and you can see that I have several flows. So what I did is I used the link and then created a little overview and simply pasted the link in here. So if I click on it, I'm going to jump directly to this flow. Here I have an overview of all my flows. So I can also simply jump into any section and run through this specific flow. Note that down here is a description. So here, if I added a description, then I can give instructions, for example, when it comes to testing. Did you know that your links remember prototype settings? When you share a link from your prototyping view, it remembers all the settings. So you can choose what size you want, for example, 100% or fit screen. You can choose if you want the flows visible or not. And of course, if you'd like to set a device. Once you have everything the way you want, hit share and then simply share that link. Anybody opening the link will have the exact same view as you. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button. There is more coming. Also, make sure to visit moolearning.io where you find the full course on prototyping with my Figma working files.